Huh. So I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, trying to teach you computer ethics. But um, today for Founders Day, we celebrate a lot of stuff. We celebrate both one of the um, pillars of our own community with Dora Lee and our luncheon this afternoon. And we celebrate the founder of the whole ethical movement way back 147 years ago when Felix Adler founded the first ethical culture community in New York City. And a century and a half is nothing to sneeze at, really. I know there are a few other religious groups that claim to date back a couple of thousands of years, but some of us think they kind of jumped the gun and they leaped to conclusions too soon before all the evidence was in. And ethical culture, on the other hand, offered its contribution well in the modern age, once we learned a thing or two about how the universe really works. The big lesson we learned was that knowledge is not a fixed and finite message entrusted to special prophets. Instead, knowledge is obtained by examining the world in a systematic and disciplined way and based on evidence gathered from the material world. Ethical culture began shortly after Charles Darwin published his book about natural selection and concluded that the many varied species in nature emerged through a long and undirected process of evolution. So that directly challenged the notion of creation by design and questioned the cosmology of the dominant religions. Well, this left a dilemma that many have still not resolved to this day, that we're not necessarily looked after by a supreme being. In ethical culture, the preponderance of people hold a humanist philosophy, by which we usually mean that we acknowledge that we have to look to ourselves, we humans, to support ourselves and go about our lives, to better our lot. We must depend on ourselves and each other to live and to thrive. So there are practical consequences to these disparate views on how the world works. Where do our morals derive from? Some of the traditional religions tell us that ethics necessary to live by have been handed down to us as a ready-made commandment. They're clear, they're distinct, and will be guided the right way if we just follow them. In the Hebrew Bible, there are 619 commandments, all set out, ready to apply to our lives. We say that ethical culture is not a religion of theology, but rather a religion of ethics. We see ethics as the key to building a fair, equitable, just, and sustainable world. That we can create a caring world if we guide ourselves by the conscientious application of ethical relationships with all our relations, at home, at work, and in the political sphere. So where do our ethics come from? Even the founder of ethical culture, Felix Adler, following the teachings of Immanuel Kant, believed that the rules to guide our actions and behavior, the foundation of ethics, eternal, were eternal rules eternal truths existing in nature. These were like the laws of physics. Our task was to strive to discover them, like all other laws of nature, and guide our lives by them. The study of ethics, then, is the challenge of trying to achieve a kind of ethical perfection according to these natural laws, uh, according to, uh, as Adler would express it. And because the eternal laws of ethics uh, there would be a perfection to strive for. Now, today, for better or worse, few people in ethical culture tend to adhere to that original idea that ethics are a fixed body of truths, be they handed down from on high, or be they laws of nature fixed and eternal. The general view today is more along the lines of philosopher John Dewey and his more modern philosophy of pragmatism. And that view explains that our rules of ethics are generated by people, by communities, based on our experience and our needs. The rules are practical and they're evolving as our needs evolve. In this view, our ethical standards are made by our culture 
and the wisdom of thought leaders among us. The ethical way, the study of it, the practice of it, is our project here in the ethiculture community. The derivation of ethics and their application requires experience, judgment, compassion, and a dash of optimism. It requires the fortitude to take responsibility and to recognize the impact of one's actions for good or for harm. Understanding the right thing to do in a given situation can tax the imagination, the wisdom, and the mental capacity of the wisest people. So it's funny how we're delegating more and more of our decision making to algorithms and computers that run them. What happens to our ethics then? Can we render an ethical code into computer code? Can, we, can experience and judgment be exercised by a computer? Can we trust the computers to make mature and considered decisions? Can a living, evolving perspective on truth, love, and beauty be programmed into a bot? Now, stories have abounded lately, obviously, you've all been following, about the amazing things that artificial intelligence can do today. Ask it to write a 200-word essay about a shaggy dog who gets lost and then found. It does it in a matter of seconds. It will return a serviceable story, exactly what you asked for. Then ask it to rewrite it again, but this time in ancient Greek, and it'll do it. Then ask it to do it all over again, an iambic pentameter that rhymes, and it does it. Now, is that super intelligence, or is that a parlor trick? Ask it to write a 500-word essay on the American Revolution, and it will return a serviceable essay that surveys the causes and the outcomes in a matter of seconds. So when people calm down after their initial stunned freak out about this, about what, three months ago when the people wondered whether anyone can just ask their chatbot to do their homework for them. The school essay has now been rendered obsolete as a valid test because who can tell if the student wrote it or the bot? Ask it to make an original song in the style of Nina Simone on Heartbreak, and it will. So how far can this go? Can it write all our magazine articles, our movie scripts, put writers out of business? Can it drive all the buses, run all the elevators, operate all the factories, render judgment in all the courts? If any kind of activity can be rendered into computer code or be based on a database of information, can it really be done faster and better by a robot than a human? Well, for sure, computer efficiency has made our world better in many ways, like the song says. Computers make calculations at lightning speed and will run the electric grid, run the, all the telephone switchboards, manage Walmart's inventory control, regulate the gasoline consumption of my little Subaru. Imagine if we had to calculate everything by hand. So we've learned to live with computers and rely on them to do all the math. But there's, there's more, of course. They make judgments about us now. And with more advanced artificial intelligence, they seem to be talking back to us now. Are they really? Now, I use the Bing search engine, that's the Microsoft search engine, and it was recently upgraded to include the chatbot AI facility. So I have my own access to AI, and I asked it, does an AI search engine actually think? So this was its response. AI search processes do not actually think in the way that humans do. Instead, they learn to pick a label or a number based upon a set of observations. In an artificial neural network, cells or nodes are connected with each cell processing inputs and producing an output that is sent to other neurons. That sounds like a brain function to me. I mean, what more do I do? I hold in my head a set of neurons that are connected 
each cell processing inputs and sending outputs to the other neurons. Stories came out all this year about people trying out the new AI chatbots and coming away just stupefied that the chatbots are talking back, or so it seems. And the big question, of course, is, while it does all that, is it really thinking? Can it exercise judgment? Can it be guided by an ethical perspective? Who is it in there who's waxing poetic and iambic pentameter? It's talking about heartbreak and love. What does it know about all that to talk to us about it? So what does it really do? It doesn't actually invent a story in Greek poetry. It searches and copies and rearranges what already exists and delivers you a product. It just does it super fast. There was a story in the Times a couple of months ago, I'm sure you saw it, where a tech reporter got into a conversation with its chatbot, GTI, and it got very weird. The bot ended up telling the reporter that he should leave his wife and run off with it. Yeah, you didn't see that? Well, before we get, it was all reproduced in the Times, like a two-page spread, it was just amazing. Well, before we get too worked up, let's stop for a second and reconsider. Is this all bad? It's always nice to be surrounded by intelligent people, so having some intelligent computers or intelligent robots around should also be good. What I found frustrating is when things are not intelligent, when things are stupid, like when I keep trying to enter into my Gmail and Google unleashes all its security measures against me, and I'm the rightful owner. You can't reason with it. You can only follow the steps it's preset for. If it were really intelligent, you could talk to it and explain, hey, it's me. Uh, actually, a lot goes into that, hey, it's me business, right? When someone says that to you, you have a lot of neurons and synapses firing. You hear the voice, compare it to your memory of all the voices you've ever heard, and identify it if it's familiar. You, as a human, have a lot of resources and capacities to process that issue. Can a computer ever be intelligent enough not to be fooled? I doubt it so far, but they are being relied on to make these kinds of judgments. What computers are really good for is to record, store, and search data and to calculate. That's pretty good, but if they ever answer questions about what do they prefer, strawberry or vanilla, or what's right, enforcement or forgiveness, they don't have the same experience out of which to make judgments. So just for a second, let's go in the other direction, the simpler direction, and compare our experience to another non-human intelligence, my little dog Presto, the little terrier. As another mammal that evolved alongside us out of the same basic materials and in the same environment, Presto and I share a tremendous amount of legacy characteristics. Our neurons are carbon-based, and we know a lot of ex we both know the experience of a tasty meal and the security of companionship. Still, I'm confident when I say there's a lot of humanness that Presto just doesn't get. To be fair, there's a great deal of dogginess that I don't really quite grasp. So with all that we share, there are still distinctions that are insurmountable in the dog-human relationship. Now, a computer is way more distant if we're to assess our similarities. A computer's neurons are silicon-based, not even carbon. That's so fundamental, wouldn't you think? It has had no experience in tasting food or in companionship. When I turn off my laptop, it's never express disappointment. <laughs> so it doesn't gain information from experience. It has none. It only knows what we tell it. It only knows what it's programmed to know and what facts it's programmed to gather. Someone recently explained in an article, I don't remember where, that the process that AI programs follow is simply to predict the next step the next word, the next concept that generally follows the one before. 
What the computer is doing is collecting and averaging out sequences. It adds up all the things that follow one statement and just takes the most prevalent and relevant and throws that back at you. Language, grammar, sentence structure, vocabulary are all formulaic. Conversational language can be built from patterns that are learned. A computer can learn what should follow one word or another, one clause or another. As for the gist or the drift of a conversation, the sequence of ideas can also be traced through patterns. But through experience, we learn there are some sequences that are best not to be followed. It's not ethical to go down some paths. How should a computer know to distinguish what's good and what's verboten? Someone has to tell it. So for today's state of computing, it still remains challenging to think of everything that a computer has to be told is out of bounds, case by case. How long did it take to explain those things to your teenage kids? It took a long time. How can it be taught to distinguish between malicious pornography and important medical information? How can it know what's relevant and necessary data and what's personal, private, and off limits? How can it be taught not to lie or to lie when it's better to do that? In sum, what the chatbots learn is from us. The algorithms direct them to learn by gathering, averaging all the common sequences and then to repeat the most common ones. That's how it learns what's right. It's the most common next step. So for human resources and hiring, for example, it will select new hires by learning who's been the most successful candidates in the past. To hire an engineer for your firm, for example, it will select those candidates with the same characteristics, the same history as those who've been hired and who advanced, advanced well. People with the same college degrees, the same geographic origins, the same gender, the same race as those who've been accepted and hired in the past. So they automatically have been reinforcing stereotypes and discriminatory practices by learning from then slavishly following past practices. And of course, it's all within this black box, so you can't really judge it, complain it, or, or complain to the uh, EEOC. Will a computer take a chance on some candidate who's interesting on a hunch? The chatbot interactions with humans have become unpredictable humors and sometimes scary. There was the bot, you must remember this too, there was the bot let loose on a chat site last year. It was programmed to learn from what it experienced and to participate in the chat with what it learned. In less than 24 hours, it became the most racist and misogynist voice on the chat because it picked up the lowest, more common denominator among the voices it heard and selected that language as the most appropriate. Well, how are we to program judgment, wisdom, and ethics into our computers? It's all a matter of math to them. Is it possible to render a formula uh, for judgment into computer code? Computer professionals always express confidence that they can fix every gaffe. So far, it seems to be on a case-by-case -case basis. Specific instructions to be programmed in like, no talk about bomb making, but chemistry is okay. No pictures of naked bodies, except if it's on the beach. But making generalized rules of ethics for an algorithm is elusive. We humans, have been struggling with issues of judgment and ethics and wisdom for the entire 3,000 years of recorded history and doubtless going much further back than that. We've not been able to settle philosophical questions like these that we're posing, and meanwhile, standards evolve. Last year's heroic statute depicts this year's traitor. Last year's classic novel is today's vulgarity and maybe tomorrow's insipid fairy tale. Rules of ethics and behavior can't be left to be derived independently by a bot let loose on the internet. 
In the end, AI will just be another tool we use to fulfill the goals we choose. It's always unsettling to see the usual ways overturned and rendered obsolete, like what uh, the horseless carriage did to the horse and buggy. It's important, though, that judgments that we make as a society should not be left entirely to the Silicon Valley industry and the engineers who do stuff because they can. Wisdom and judgment require an exercise of foresight, judgment, and intentionality. Just as John Dewey expressed it, our ethical guidelines derive from our experience and our needs. Today, I'm sure he would add, not the robot's needs. Clearly, we can't outsource wisdom and judgment to a faceless and unanswerable application. There has to be accountability, and some real people have to be responsible for the ultimate consequences. Okay, thanks.